For now, let us hear from the UFC women's bantamweight champion. Her name is Amanda Nunes. She was actually joined by Nina Ansaroff, and this was a fascinating interview. First time I get a chance to talk to her about pulling out of 213, about the comments from Dana White, about, you know, getting medically cleared and not fighting. Fascinating stuff from the two of them, especially Nina talking on Amanda's behalf. So here's that conversation that was taped just moments ago. All right, and how exciting is this? We are now being joined by the reigning, defending UFC women's bantamweight champion, the one and only Amanda Nunes, who returns to action at UFC 215 in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, first week of September against, of course, Valentina Shevchenko. Also, Nina Ansaroff is here, who just got a fight herself. Angela Hill, November, Virginia, Yep. right? Mm -hmm. This is very exciting, guys. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. We have a lot to talk about. In fact, I've been hounding you, <laughs> Amanda, to talk Sorry. to you ever since early July. We have to talk about what happened, and, and in particular, the way it was handled, because I spoke out about this. A lot of the media did as well. We felt like you weren't treated with the respect that you deserved, that you weren't given the benefit of the doubt by the UFC, by the company, by your promoter. Did you feel like you were disrespected in the way it was handled when you could not fight Valentina Shevchenko? Um, I, you know, like, they they do whatever they want, you know. I, my, my, I know I was 100%. I was honest, you know. I, I want to step in that cage 100%. And I decided just... I talk about and whatever they they say or whatever they you know put in the media. I don't. I didn't even care. When did you start to feel sick that week? Actually, uh, two days before. Uh, when I two days before I started my weight cut, I already I don't sleep very well. Okay. You know I have a lot of pressure in my head, but. Uh, I always, when I fight in Vegas, I have this horrible pressure because my sinus pressure. Where but does it I, hurt? I here? Here? It's all here. All yeah. here, yeah. yeah. And then, but i be able to, to take my medicine and then be able to, to recover. But uh, the, the day I started my wake up, the, was, the pressure was, like, was more strong. And then at the time, I can't take any more uh, any medicine because the, the USADA. It's right. not allowed through USADA. Right. And then make it harder to, to try to recover. Okay. And then the, the day of the fight, I don't be able to, to... What were you feeling? I feel like very bad uh, pressure. I don't have like appetite. And... Off balance. Off balance, like, off balance okay. the whole time. Like, was like a little bit weird. I, okay. I saw it from... You were there, so yeah, please tell us. Yeah, I saw it from a couple days before. Um, you know, she, she was going through it like she normally does. She fought Ronda with the same condition she fought, was going to fight Valentina with, but fortunately she was able to get through it. You know, she didn't feel as much pressure or pain in the head as she did, but she still walked to the cage with her breathe right strip on. The issue is she wasn't allowed to take the medication that she takes because it has a nasal steroid in it until seven days before the competition. Okay. Luckily, when she fought Ronda, um, she felt good enough where the medicine worked up to what it was supposed to, but this time it wasn't. Uh, maybe it was a little more dry this time since she fought in the middle of the summer rather than in the winter. And the combination of that with being dehydrated while cutting weight got it stuck in her sinuses and she wasn't able to recover. And when she looked at me during the weight cut, I already knew something was wrong, you know, but you try not to put that negativity in her head right away. Like, hey, is everything okay? Yeah. It was just kind of like, all right, we got a couple more pounds. Let's get through this. After she got through the weight cut, you know, as soon as you hit that weight, it's a, a relief automatically, but I didn't see the relief in her face. It still sent like something was wrong, you know? But, you know, we went through it. She went to the weigh, the weigh-ins. And then immediately after the weigh-ins, when she started rehydrating, she just didn't look right. You know, her eyes weren't focusing. She just didn't seem like the Amanda I've known. And I didn't want to say anything. I was waiting for her maybe to say something to me because I didn't want to put anything in her head if there wasn't there. So then as she, we went to go eat, she didn't really know what she wanted to eat, which is something you plan three weeks before yeah. a weight cut is what you're going to eat after you weigh in. But she didn't seem hungry. And then she looked at me and she's like, because uh, her family's there, she didn't want to make a big deal about it. And she's like, hey, I need to talk. Let, let's talk after here. And right away I knew something was up. You know, I already knew. And when she said it to me, from that moment I didn't say anything out loud or anything, but I already didn't want her to fight. Because I know her. She would fight through anything. If she doesn't feel good, she really doesn't feel good. So it was surprising to me that 
she was speaking to me about it instead of holding it in and I knew something was up and I, I didn't want her to fight honestly even if she told me like no I'm like I'm gonna do it even though I, I, I would have fought, fought her on it because I know her and I knew she didn't feel well we went to the doctor and of course they did like blood exams all these exams this is Friday now this is Friday, Friday yeah. and then they released her and said she was cleared and I was just like she still didn't look okay she still didn't have an appetite and then the next morning, she said, I, she didn't sleep that night. Her heart rate was like over 100 all night. We tracked it on the heart rate monitor. Like she, something, something wasn't right. And the next morning we went back to the hospital and they did the CAT scan of her lungs, her abdomen, and then they did the CAT scan of her sinuses. And it came back, the, sin, the doctor's like, oh, there's a little bit, you know, a buildup there. Um, but Dr. Davidson or the UFC doctor cleared her. And then in my head, I'm just like, okay, well, Cleared can mean many things. You know, a lot of people have been cleared that haven't been okay to fight. I've been cleared when I wasn't okay to fight. So it didn't mean much to me because I knew Amanda and I know Amanda's character. So that didn't mean anything. She doesn't feel good. She doesn't feel good. Later after, I don't know if maybe they looked at it quickly or didn't read it correctly. And maybe Dana didn't get the news on exactly what was wrong, made a statement on what was said. She was cleared. She was okay to fight. Right. But... After we got back, we brought the CAT scan to spe like four specialists, and they're all like, she's messed up. Like, taking a punch to the head like that, she's not going to feel good, and it wasn't worth it. She shouldn't have fought. So clear can mean many things. Right. Of course, in the media's eye, through the UFC, maybe having to you know protect their back a little or whatever reason it was for, they said what they said, and we kind of had to roll with it too. You know, It sucked for us, her especially, having to deal with all the hate from all the fans and media. Yeah. But they didn't know. I know. I know her. Everyone that knows her knows her. That that would never happen. The coaches, the team. She didn't feel good. She shouldn't have fought. And, you know, the UFC, it, it came out how it did. Maybe they should have had her back a little more um, and took her side on it. Yeah. And they didn't. But it is what it is. She wants the same fight. She wants the same opponent. She got that. And we're just going to play it back. What was it like when you had to tell them that you couldn't fight, that feeling on Saturday? You know, it was very tough for me because I was like ready you know and I wanna I wanna like shut this girl up I wanna like fight her so bad but uh, at the same time I have to make a good choice you know I have to to be 100% and I did the right the right thing you know I know this fight be, UFC be able to schedule mm -hmm. I know if it if it you know I can push it for a little more longer this is gonna happen again and now everything's fine, you know. How do you feel now? Now I feel way You're better. You're good. So way how, better. how do you avoid? She's still on medication. I still, okay. She has a few more days left of the medication, and then she's going to take the, the nasal steroid until the seven days that's permitted by USADA. Okay. And then it should be cleared up enough for her to fight, and after that she's going to do the surgery. There wasn't enough time oh, for her surgery. to do. What does she's, that entail? She was going to do the balloon surgery where they go in and they fracture the the bones up in the sinus to open it more so it can drain all out okay um but the procedure by the time we got the cat scan and everything taken care of it was too close to the fight yeah um and they said she wouldn't be able to take any combat or punches for 10 days and you can't do that that right. close to the fight so she's going to go through with the medication she was given and then after the fight do the surgery so the fight is on september 9th um unfortunately you have to go so we'll end on this question it feels like throughout your career a lot of people have been doubting you do you feel like there is a bit of a chip on your shoulder going into this one because of what Valentina said after the fight, because of some people believing that you were scared, which, by the way, I don't believe that at all and feel like you were you know, not treated very fairly and all that, but I already made that clear. Do you feel like you have something to prove come September 9th? Uh, actually, the more important thing for me is stepping in that octagon 100%, you know? And then whatever, whatever people say, I, I will, like, prove it. To myself, you know, like, and and getting my job done. And this is the thing that I think right now, okay. you know. And defend this belt, keep this belt, and that's it. All right. I think like, you know, have anything to say about nobody. All the fans say whatever they want. You know, I didn't even see anything, honestly. Like, I didn't oh, even, I didn't even was that to, to see anything. That's probably best. Honestly. That's probably best. Uh, Nina's the one to tell me about the news and everything, about okay. MMA and stuff. But, um... Yeah, I'm the champion, you know. People's gonna talk bad and, and, and good about me. I'm All ready the best for to you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. It goes down September 9th, Rogers Place in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Amanda Nunez against Valentina Shevchenko for this. 
UFC Women's Bantamweight title, also Demetrius Johnson versus Ray Borg. And don't forget, November 11th in Virginia, the return of Nina Ansaroff against one Angela Hill. Very important fight in the 115-pound division. So I wish you the best. Sorry we didn't have time to talk about all of that, but they no are wrapping you up. You guys are very busy. You have a lot of places to go, but thank you so thank much you. and best of luck to both thank of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bantamweight champion. I thought Ansaroff was actually really interesting talking about everything that she went through that week and especially the 48 hours before UFC 213. Of course, English is her first language, so she could explain the situation a little more. She was right there by Amanda's side, but uh, it seems like, what are we, a month and a half later, they have chosen to take a bit of the high road, but you can tell that, you know, the, the term medically cleared maybe rubbed them a little bit the wrong way because when you throw that out there and say that someone is medically cleared, you are implying that they just don't want to fight. They're okay to fight. The doctors cleared them, but they're just choosing not to fight. And that's when the, the narrative that she is scared and afraid to fight, Valentina Shipchenk, all that stuff. I mean, as I asked Valentina, Amanda Nunes doesn't have a history of bowing out of fights. She doesn't have a history of being quote unquote scared. In fact, I don't think anyone's really scared. Um, if you're fighting in the UFC, I mean, you're actually fighting in a cage and they close a, a door behind you and you're literally wearing four ounce gloves and nothing else. You're, you're not scared. I think that's a silly notion.